Hey guys, welcome to another daily video here. Um, it's been a little while since uh, I've done any daily tips here. Uh, so today I'm going to get started here and show you an introduction to Pro Tools. Um, a while, I guess about a month ago, I started using Pro Tools here and so I've learned quite a bit on my, um, on my road to learning this. So I'm going to show you a little introduction here and then uh, in future videos we'll get into more advanced stuff and more techniques and things. This is just going to be a basic overview of the um, tools inside of Pro Tools. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to show you how to create a new session. Uh, here's the default loading screen. Um, it's a quick start uh, loading screen here. Uh, I think it defaults to create a blank session and so that's what I'm going to be doing here. Um, down here you have your session parameters. Uh, you have you can choose your type of uh, audio file. Um, I just leave it at WAV file. You can also use AIFF if you um, uh, are on a Mac. That's a pretty uh, popular format, and that's exactly what uh, Logic records with. So, um, but for cross-platform compatibility, I always stick uh, with WAV files. Um, here, you can choose your sample rate from 44.1 to 96k if your interface supports that. Um, here's your bit width, uh, bit depth. I always use 24-bit. And I pretty much always use 44.1 unless I'm recording some kind of uh, high detail thing. You can use 96K. Um, for metal and things like that, you won't notice the difference between 44.1 and 96K. Um, here's your I.O. settings. Um, I always switch this to stereo mix. I've had um, sometimes last used settings right here. Um, don't work correctly so I always choose stereo mix and that always works fine and if you don't want to see this uh, quick start dialog box when Pro Tools starts you can uncheck this down here but I like to keep this open because when you open it again it'll it uh, shows your recent sessions um, like like this it shows your recent sessions and uh, you can open your sessions from here so that's I uh, found that useful um, but I'm just going to do this, I'm gonna create a new session here. Then it's going to ask you where you want to save it. And um, normally you would save this to an external hard drive so that you can uh, uh, use an external hard drive when you're recording uh, to take the load off your internal hard drive. But um, this I'm just going to go um, test tutorial. I'm just going to name that that on my desktop and click save. Then it's going to build my session. And here's the default session inside of Pro Tools. Um, right here you've got your click track that always loads um, automatically. Uh, up here you have your tempo. If you double click on this little red triangle here, you will uh, get your little tempo change dialog box here. Uh, let's change that to let's say 160. And you can change your resolution here. I always just leave it at the default. Uh, and then another cool thing that you can do uh, with this tempo change is um, tap tempo. So once you have this this little tempo change dialog box here, you could just tap the uh, key, the T key on the keyboard, to um, uh, get whatever tempo you're playing. Like if you're playing a guitar riff and you just tap the T button along with it, um, you can get uh, your most accurate uh, uh, tempo. Um, this is commonly found on um, uh, delay pedals and things like that. Uh, it's called tap tempo. You just click, keep pressing T, and as you can see, it changes. So that's cool. Um, up here, you have all your tools. This is your different zoom levels right here. Um, one is the biggest zoom, uh, it's the most zoomed out, and, then get, and two is the next zoomed out, three, getting more um, closer to the um, different. And now you're getting really small and precise and then five is even more precise so um these this is your MIDI note height um, I'll show you this uh, audio height in just a minute here's your different modes I'll get into these in another tutorial um, here's your smart tool um, this is what as you can see down here in the um, track view uh, or this track lane here uh, you have your little selector here, and this smart tool is a selector. And then, oh, yeah, it's not going to let me do it here, but I'll show you the smart tool in action here in just a minute. Um, here's your zoom tool. 
uh, and there's something cool about the zoom tool you uh, just click and drag where you want to zoom in and then it automatically zooms to that area so that's really cool and you can hit your zoom out button and you can also use con uh, command um, bracket the, the, the brackets on your keyboard command in the brackets to get smaller and, and larger so that, that's a cool little uh, keyboard shortcut that I use all the time uh, let's see here's the pencil tool uh, I don't use this tool very often you can use it for drawing automation and things like that uh, alright I'm just gonna show you how to import some audio actually hold on just one second um, this is the default thing in Pro Tools this, this is how it comes default actually it might come with these tracks and the regions open I don't remember but anyway uh, right here you can get your uh, input and output um, things where you can change them um, see right here I can change the, the input on my interface to whatever input I want I have eight inputs um, right now I'm using input 5 and if I, I change that and I arm the track which I can't because this is a MIDI track but or I mean a click track and then here you can change the outputs so um to get and then I also use there's one more thing that I usually add here and it's the inserts A through E so that's gonna give you the first five inserts on your um, your track um, I use that to add quick effects um, I find that easy. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You have all this other stuff, and if you click all, it'll, it'll add everything in there. And then you can click minimal, and it goes back to the default. Um, I'm going to go to IO and inserts. All right. Now, over here, you have your tracks. So when you create new tracks, so let's go create a new audio track. Um, let's go ahead and make let's make four mono tracks in the samples. I usually use ticks for like um, virtual instruments like drum software and I use samples for real audio and then hit the little plus button I'm gonna create a master fader track and then I'm gonna make that a stereo track and, and samples and uh, let's go ahead and create those and the Pro Tools automatically creates them as you can see and they're all different colors to keep it um, nice and organized. Uh, as you can see, it added them all to the tracks menu here, or in this tracks panel over here. And uh, yeah, I find this easy for navigating um, what tracks that I'm looking for when you have a bunch of tracks going on. Uh, here's a region, regions list. Uh, any kind of audio you record is going to come up in this regions list. Um, and uh, we'll get into more detail with this stuff later. And here are the, these little arrows down here at the bottom. You can close those. All right, to give you more screen real estate. Now um, I'm gonna go ahead and undo. Or actually, no, give me that tracks menu back. I'm gonna delete those audio tracks because I don't need them. I'm not gonna be do using them for this video. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and import some kind of audio here. Let's see if I can find an audio track to import. Um, Let's go to uh, let's go here. Let's go. Let's add the. Doesn't matter. Let's just add that. Here's how you import files. You go um, whatever file you're looking for. You find it in your hard drive. You click it. And it comes down here in regions. Current file. You click convert and it's going to convert that from the sample rate the sample rate of the actual file to the sample rate that your project's in and click done and it'll automatically it'll, it'll pop up where you want your um, file that you're converting to save um, I always just leave it at the default audio files here because it's usually um, always right so I'll just click choose and now it's going to convert the audio it's going to ask you if you want to create a new track or just add it to the regions um, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to add a um, new track and then you can choose it a selection or a spot um, in the in the location where it's going to start at. I'm just going to choose uh, session start. 
and cl click OK. And as you can see, now we have that kick drum file. The tempo's not right, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just adding this for uh, to demonstrate a tool here. Um, here's your smart tool, as you can see. Here's your grabber thing where you can move the track around to the grid. Uh, later on, I'll show you how you can move it not with the grid. Um, and then here's you can select your audio to edit. And then here you have your trimmer tool where you can actually trim the audio. So that's your smart tool in, out, in action. Um, the smart tool is very handy. I really like this tool a lot. Um, uh, with this little button right here, uh, it's the tab to transients button. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and go to this track. I'm going to hit the tab key with that button enabled. And it's go to the, it's going to, every time you hit tab, it's going to go to the next tab or the next uh, transient. Um, this is good for uh, quantizing drums, uh, quantizing bass, things like that. It works quite well. Um, uh, let's see, then this other button right here, this is your um, link timeline and edit selection button. So um, with this enabled, uh, it's going to link the timeline uh, edit selection here to the one on the uh, top up here. Um, and you can do some cool stuff with this, like punching in and out with recording. Um, I'll show you that uh, later in another video. Um, and then this button right here, or actually, let's just, I'll show you what it does if you don't have that uh, link um, edit and selection thing enabled. Uh, as you can see, it adds a selection here, and it, it doesn't link the, the uh, timeline selection to it. So um, let's go ahead and click this button right here. This button is a insertion follows playback button. Uh, with this button enabled, uh, as you can see, the, the, the uh, playhead's moving. And when you click spacebar again, the um, timeline uh, moves to the, the place where you stopped it. Um, without that button enabled, um, let's just play that. Or actually, bring that back here. And then play that. Hit spacebar, it goes back to the starting point. That's really useful for editing. Um, this th this uh, insertion follows playback is useful for playing audio and things like that. So uh, that's pretty much the tools that I mainly use. Um, there's other tools in here that I'll get to in more video in uh, future videos, but um, I guess I should also say there's a couple main windows here. Um, the main window we're looking at right now is called the um, uh, edit window, and then if you click uh, hit con uh, command equal or control equal on PC um, it's gonna pop up your mix window this is where you can add all your effects and things like that um, and you can do your mixer it's, it's, it's a little mixer um, you're gonna spend a lot of time in both of those windows so make sure you know that that uh, shortcut command equal on Mac or control equal on Windows so um, I guess that's pretty much it. I guess I could show you how to record some audio. Let's go ahead and delete that kick track. Um, let's go ahead and choose the input 5. That's the um, input that I'm using for this mic right now that I'm talking into. Uh, as you can see the little meters down here are moving uh, according to my voice. So I've already armed this track for recording. Now to record you can hit command equal if you don't have your um, um, for uh, on my computer right here, I have command uh, command equal is um, opening the spotlight thing on my Mac, um, so I can't do that with this. I haven't turned that off yet. Um, you can do it inside of your system preferences on Mac OS X. Um, but uh, so to um, record something, you have to arm Pro Tools, and then just hit the space bar wherever you want to record. All right. So um, that's pretty much a little basic overview and introduction to Pro Tools, some of the main things that I use. Um, like I said, we'll get into more advanced stuff in um, future videos because there's a ton of stuff you can do with, with Pro Tools here. So um, I guess that's going to be it with this video and um, we'll see you next time.